Welcome back everyone, I'm Joe, also known as Big Red One, and this is the Gamers Armada review of Infamous 2 by Sucker Punch. To start off, I want to say for those of you that played the original Infamous, you'll be right at home in Infamous 2. In fact, one of the best things about Infamous 2 is that Sucker Punch did not try to reinvent the wheel when creating the sequel, and instead just made deliberate improvements without messing with the system. You'll find that Cole still handles much the same way he did in the past, but he's got some brand new powers and a vast new city to kick some ass in. The combat is fast and furious, and it will put you to the test. Of course, you can still lower the difficulty setting if you're unable to get past certain points, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know, if you want to be able to live with yourself. Like a lot of games these days, Infamous 2 does try to infuse some choice into how you play the game. Which, depending on who you ask, they did with varying degrees of success. The choices aren't complicated though. For example, saving a person from an exploding bomb, or mugging some poor fool to take the blast shard that he found. There's no real moral complexity to it, and therefore, there is very little thought that goes into that decision. I will say that this isn't a bad thing for two reasons. Number one, I don't always want to put my thinking hat on when I play a game. Sometimes I just want to go where the game takes me and let things happen. And making small, quick decisions without much thought is great for that. Infamous 2 removes just enough ambiguity from the decision to make it quick and simple. Good or evil. What do you want to do? Number two, too much choice can really bog down a game. Trying to figure out what the hidden consequences are or being guilt ridden for making the wrong choice can drain time. Time that I don't have or I'm just not prepared to give at that moment. For certain games this is fine though, as the games are built around those kinds of choices like Mass Effect or The Witcher. But to be true, this game didn't have to be either of those, and it knows that. More importantly, I'm perfectly okay with it. Another cool part of the game, which I believe will be a big part of the game in the future, is the user-generated content. Sucker Punch did an amazing thing here and added an area of the game where you can create your own quests or races and then let them out into the world for other coals to play through. The content is rated from 1 to 5 stars, and the higher rated your content is, the more it will show up in other people's games. This is a great way to extend the game since there is no multiplayer option, and there's really only two ways to play the game. In the game I found myself searching the city for the green markers that indicate the quest is user generated, because I wanted to see what kind of creativity there was out there. Were they all going to be racing games, would they be quick moral decisions, or would they be great exploration pieces? I can tell you that there is plenty to go around, and while there is not a lot of originality in them yet, there will be. As creators get more comfortable with the system and refine their methods, I believe user-generated content could eclipse the main content in playability. The only downside is that there won't be any cutscenes or voice acting, but maybe someday. I do have two gripes with this game though, and one little baby gripe to bring up. I'll start with the baby gripe first, and that's that I hate Cole's look and voice in this game. While Cole does look a bit like Jason Statham, he is just not that awesome and never will be. He also lacks the average guy look that he sported in the first game, which I found endearing. Sucker Punch tried to amp him up to be cooler, but I just found him annoying. And then there's his voice, which sucks because it's grating and it sounds like someone's trying way too hard to be badass. Kind of like Christian Bale in Batman. Moving on, the camera is not that great either. It has a bad way of moving around and keeping me looking in one direction while I try like hell to fight in the other direction. It's just a little too touchy and clumsy for my tastes. The other gripe is that the physical combat feels unsatisfying. The electrical tuning fork that Cole gets in this game is interesting, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with it. It certainly didn't add to the combat in my opinion. Also one point which is not a gripe but more of a talking point. This game incorporates a lot of climbing, similar to that of Assassin's Creed. It works well for this game because it's less grounded in reality in terms of physics, and I thought that it was really interesting. It's faster and less methodical, and in my opinion, a great pull from another genre. Personally, I would really like to see more of this kind of genre mixing in the future. I think it adds to the game and adds a lot of depth. And now for the end of my review. I want you all to know that this is a fantastic game, and that I've spent the same amount of money on much, much worse games. Save your allowance, work some overtime, do whatever you have to do, but you need to buy this game. You'll thank me for it later. Also, leave some comments and let us know what you think. Thanks.